Thank you, Senator. Senator Dunla. Carla, August Gurumai, Iris Island, then the Gisbrak Taravay Tawak Tashaw, and you. I want to welcome the opportunity to uh, speak on uh, Senator O'Donnell's uh, bill uh, this afternoon because. I think we can all acknowledge the uh, real significance uh, of the intent uh, behind uh, the bill, and I think the sincere uh, uh, and honest desire uh, to see uh, a change uh, in the law uh, in this regard. And while there will be a divergence uh, of opinion uh, on this particular bill and some of the nuances uh, around it, I do think uh, it is important, and it has been reflected thus far, that uh, members of this Shana do approach, uh, not least given uh, some of the uh, victims and organisations represented in the public gallery, but that we do and we have approached this in a very uh, respectful uh, and understanding uh, approach and frame of mind. Um, like uh, my uh, Fianna Fáil colleague, uh, we will uh, be opposed uh, the bill at this stage, Senator uh, O'Donnell, and that's not to take away, uh, as I said, from the contribution. And I thought you, you made a very uh, uh, passionate uh, uh, contribution, uh, and, and I appreciate and recognise fully um, why uh, you want to see uh, this bill uh, advanced. However, uh, I'll outline some of the reasons uh, as to why uh, uh, Sinn Féin uh, will be uh, opposing it at this stage. And, Obviously, the bill is a private member's uh, bill tabled by yourself and is designed to provide a mechanism whereby the court can, upon passing a sentence for murder, determine the amount of time an offender will spend in prison before they may be deemed eligible for remission, parole or early release and introduces minimum custodial periods of sentencing depending on the category of the type and nature of the offence of murder. Currently, a conviction for murder receives a mandatory minimum life sentence, but the actual length of time which an offender will serve in prison depends on the circumstances of the case. Under this bill, the person convicted will serve a minimum of 30 or 25 years or higher, depending on the circumstances. There is a provision to give judicial discretion within this, but with the caveat that an offence cannot have a sentence lower than the 30 or 25 years as set out in the bill. Our party's approach to justice matters is that policy development should be developed on a clear and evidence, evidential basis. While I recognise that the proposed provisions of this bill are not quite mandatory sentencing, given that there is some very limited judicial discretion within it, the manner in which it is constructed is certainly akin to a mandatory sentencing regime, depending on the nature and type of murder that a defendant was convicted for. Sinn Féin is opposed to the use of mandatory sentencing. While advocates of mandatory sentencing argue that it makes sentencing more consistent and makes judges more accountable for their decisions, its use holds the potential for miscarriages of justice. By applying an identical sentence to all offenders who have committed similar but not identical crimes, it is, our view, it is in our view an overblunt sentencing tool. It is our belief that this bill, despite its range of items that a judge may take into consideration, will prevent the judiciary considering the nuances of the situation, including offender intent and degree of social harm. We believe that there is more than what is contained. We believe that there is more than what is contained in the bill that must be taken together in order to form a complete picture of the seriousness of the offence and the appropriateness of a given sentence. This, of course, could create the potential for injustices. We are not convinced either that this would have any deterrent factor on those who it is aimed at. Sinn Féin believes, indeed agrees with the drafters of the bill, that sentencing must be proportionate to each crime committed, but judicial discretion is essential when determining the sentence to be administered by the court. This allows the judge to factor in the circumstances in which the offence occurred, whether there were any aggravating factors, particularly violent behaviour, the character, age and previous criminal record of the defendant. It allows the judge to consider alternatives to custody, such as rehabilitative programmes, uh, where they may be appropriate. And I accept fully and acknowledge fully also that there will be a case in where they, that is not appropriate. It is our view, and this applies to all offences across the board, that the introduction of non-statutory sentencing guidelines setting out the principles that, there, that should underpin sentencing, including the principle uh, of imprisonment as a last resort, community safety imperatives, and the principle of proportionality between the severity of the sentence and the seriousness of an offence. I recognise the particular issues pertaining to the mandatory life sentence for murder in Ireland, but it is our view that there should be the creation of a sentencing guidelines council to monitor sentencing guidelines and their effectiveness. The Law Reform Commission, as has been mentioned, has also called for a similar body to be introduced. 
The effect of this bill is to introduce a sentencing regime that is tantamount to mandatory sentencing regime, regimes. And while we acknowledge there is scope for some judicial discretion, the introduction of minimum custodial periods of detention effectively amounts to a presumptive, a presumptive sentencing regime. While we support the idea of judges taking degrees of planning and premeditation, other offences and mitigating factors such as a lack of pre, pre, premeditation or whether the offender was provoked through domestic violence or acted in self-defence and cooper, co cooperated with Guard E. We believe that the objective would be better achieved through the introduction of a sentencing guidelines council that would effectively guide the judiciary in their task. The law reform, as I mentioned, has repeatedly called for the establishment of a body that is empowered to develop and publish non-statutory sentencing guidelines reflecting the general aims of the criminal sanctions. These could set out the principles that should underpin sentencing, including the principle of imprisonment as a last resort and the principle of proportionality between the severity of the sentence and the seriousness of the offence. It is our view that this would be a more appropriate approach to take for all offences. We further believe that sentencing judges should provide written explanation of any custodial sentences imposed, including the mitigating and aggravating factors considered. It would also be helpful if plans were established at the outset of all sentences for the convicted person in relation to their imprisonment and engagement with rehabilitation services. In conclusion, I commend the Senator's ways to examine this issue, but believe that the offence of murder should not be dealt with in isolation and that non-statutory sentencing guidelines would be a more, much more appropriate uh, approach to take at this stage. And as I said at the beginning, uh, appreciating fully uh, and hoping to work uh, on this issue with uh, the proposers and seconders and indeed other colleagues uh, on uh, this uh, much needed uh, legislation and indeed much, much needed review uh, of our, uh, our, our criminal justice system and our sentence in laws in the whole. Uh, at this stage, we don't believe, I think, in the same spirit of uh, honesty and in the same spirit of uh, genuine uh, aspiration to change the law, we don't think that this bill does uh, what is necessary. Gordon Michael.